الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم. You believe in a creator. Okay, good. So you believe that creator is the creator of all the universe, everything that exists. You don't think he's a man or a woman or like a... Okay, good, man, we're there. There you go. What's your name? Daniel. Daniel, all right, man. So we as Muslims have the same belief. We believe there's one creator. That creator created the entire galaxies, universes, whatever else is out there that we know about, we don't know about, it's from that one creator, right? Yeah. No, that creator gave us guidance. You believe that that creator sent us messengers? Yeah. Like, like Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them. So you believe in those messengers? Yes? From Adam to Muhammad? Like I said, I don't know too much about Muhammad. I grew up Christian. Gotcha. I don't know too much about Muhammad, but I do so believe let me, like, in all of those people that you mentioned, I do believe that they were sent. From excellent. Muhammad. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then we're going to do your Shahada because you're already Muslim. You already got that belief. You're good. You're good. Look, what is the purpose of life? It's a hard question, right? But it's an important question, right? Daniel, right? Yeah. So think about it. Daniel, like, look, how old are you? 22. 22. 22 years of your life, you worried about money, job, school, family, whether people like you, don't like you. These are the things that people worry about, right? Yeah. But in the end of the day, when everybody, every one of us, our life's going to end, right? Yeah. And when that death comes to us, what's money going to do for you? You ever seen anybody get buried? Yeah. I have. I buried my own friends, right? When I was in high school, some of them got shot, some got stabbed, some had accident, right? Whatever, right? All that money they had, the fame they may have had, the girls, or if they were girls, whatever, boyfriends, husbands, whatever, none of that went to the grave with them, right? When you buried somebody, did you, did you think like, okay, how, many, how much money do you have in the bank account? Didn't matter, right? So that's why it's so important. Daniel, you didn't come here on accident. Allah brought you here. This was not a coincidence. Nothing's a coincidence. It's written for you, right? But now you have a choice. You know in your heart there's only one creator. You know that creator is not a man. It's not somebody who eats and sleeps and get, gets killed and things like that. You know that. You know that creator is not a monkey. It's not a dog. It's not, it's not some spiritual animal that, you know, has rainbow colors and all that kind of weirdness that people imagine up, right? You know that creator is above all of that. In the Quran it says, There is nothing compatible to that creator. What we know about him through his book, we believe in. Whatever he said about himself, that he is one, that there is no second, he has no children. We believe. Why? Because he tells us. We don't imagine up ourselves, right? You know that creator is so wise that it's not going to leave you without guidance, right? Imagine you, Daniel. Let's say you come up with a new kind of bike, like you got a cool bike, right? But let's say you're real smart. You're like, you know what I need? I need a bike that can fly. And you're, you're, you're smart like that, Daniel, right? You start working on it and you get a bike that can fly, right? Not only does it fly, but it can go in the water and it becomes a boat. And when it gets on the road, it's a bike, right? It's got a little kitchen in the back. It cooks for you, right? It's, it's really cool, right? You are so smart, you come up with that. But you know that bike has certain instructions, right? Like if, if people put regular uh, gasoline in it, it's going to blow up because it doesn't take gas, right? So you, what are you going to do? You're going to send some instructions, right? Okay. I just bought a pair of glasses and there were instructions with it. You, know? uh, I see, I see you see where I'm getting at, right? So that creator is going to send us guidance. Yeah, definitely. That, you believe that, I believe that. You're Muslim, I'm telling you, man. We're there, right? That's something, I'm sorry to cut you Go off. Go for it. That's something that I was telling him, you know, it's like uh, my whole life, I always, like, I, I grew up reading the Jewish Bible. Wow. Since I was, before I was born, you know, my, my, I never knew my dad well, but I just know that he would read me a lot of verses from the Bible. Nice. I never really knew him that well, but growing I up, feel my you. Mom, you know, she was very, Religion, so she always taught me all these things. So nice. I basically grew up studying the Bible. Cool. And I do believe a lot, a lot of it, you know. And I was telling him, you know, I was like, I try to follow the best that I can. The only thing is, like, the whole religion had something I never really felt comfortable with. I'm with you. You know why? Because people made up stuff and introduced it into the religion. And it was always like. See, the concept that here, uh, the Ten Commandments, right? Here, O Israel, your Lord is one. Yeah. You, you, you jive with that. You feel that. You're like, yeah. this makes sense. Yeah. But then when they're like, 
you got to wear top hats and big jackets and, you know, wear little tassels and take live chicken on their head like some of the Jewish practices today. You're like, that's not Moses and stuff. That's not David. That's not real. That. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Google it, right? Okay. They got this practice. Uh, the Jews, they yeah. take a live chicken and they kind of put it over their head to get sins forgiven or something. But Moses didn't do that. David didn't do that. It's not in the Torah. So you see, people made up a lot of this stuff, yeah. right? A lot of the religious practices today, they're made up. Yeah. They're not the way of Moses or, or Abraham or Jesus. Like, like, think about this. Jesus in the Bible, because you read the Bible, he put his forehead to the ground and prayed. You know about that? I'm going to show you right now. Man. Right? Exactly, you know, like, like circumcision, all of that, right? Yeah, so one of those is doing stuff like that, you know, like having like, they call it like, kind of like having a show for praying. We like, right. supposedly all we do, we just bow our heads, pray, and that's it, you know? Right. So but, like, okay, that's something that was But look at how Jesus prayed, right? Yeah. Let me just answer this real quick. So, let's go here. We're going to be in Matthew. Twenty six. Then Jesus came with them to a place called the Gethsemane, right? Uh -huh. And said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. So yeah. he's going to go in and pray. Yeah. And what does he do? He went a little further. This is Matthew 26, 39. Okay. All right. And he went a little further and fell. He put his face on the ground and prayed, saying to the Father, to the God, right? Yeah. So he put his face on the ground and prayed, right? You saw how earlier, I don't know if you saw I was praying. Or you see us prayer later, yeah, yeah, you'll see it, yeah. you've seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. So we pray the way Jesus prayed. If you look in the Old Testament, you'll find Abraham, Moses, others who prayed the same way. They put their forehead to the ground. They prayed. But today you go to church, do you see that? That's what I was telling him. We were, you don't see it, that. right? Just taught, you know, just bow your head and that's it. As a Muslim, we are the true followers of Jesus. We follow his true message. Yes. For example, what do Christians say about Jesus? What do they say about him? Yeah. Oh, you know that he's the son of God. They say he's the son of God. You've read the Bible, but I'm going to show you something in the Bible. Even though a lot of this is just made up by them, by them, but some things of the truth are still there. They can't hide it, right? Yeah. And the God, this is there according to Christians, according to New Testament, Acts 3.13. And God of Abraham, Jesus is telling him, and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus. What does he say? The God of Abraham and Jacob, the one God, one Allah, glorified, right? And glorified his servant Jesus, not his son, not himself, his servant Jesus, whom you have delivered up. So now, is he the servant of God or is he God? Right? Yeah, yeah, he's not God. He's not, he's not God. God. That, you're Muslim, bro. You're Muslim. Like, you're there. Yeah, because they always say, you know, oh, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one. Right. And that's like. They but can. again, they can't they because can. man, you're Muslim, bro. Because, well, like, Daniel, example, where do, you been? I do believe like the Holy Spirit, well, from what I was taught, that the Holy Spirit is a is a real thing, but it's not God. Right, but Jesus is not God either. There you go. Separate, there you go, man. man. There's there. only one. There's <laughs> I know that there's only one that. that All right. Now we believe in Jesus. Uh -huh. We believe in Moses. We believe in Abraham. But we know that there was to be the last messenger to come. The yeah. Quran tells us that last messenger is the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon all of the messengers. We love them all. Yeah. Like you see people disrespecting Muhammad, peace be upon him, or some, some Jews speaking bad about Jesus, peace be upon him. Muslims, we love all of them. We love Moses, we love Abraham, we love David, we love Jesus, we love Muhammad. We say peace and blessings be on all of them, right? 
That last messenger brought the Quran. You have a Quran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you got I'm one. Good, mind. good, good, right? This was the last testament, right? The last message. And he brought it even though he couldn't read or write. Now imagine if I tell you this brother can't read or write, right? But he has a book in English that no English author can refute. Wouldn't you be like, how can that be? If he can't read and write, how could he, how could how could he come he up? Exactly. How could he write a book? So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, yeah. he couldn't read or write. But Allah revealed to him the Quran. He would recite the Quran and the companions would memorize and write it. And then the Arab poets who were the, who were the excellent like masters of Arabic language, they were told, if you can bring a book like it, and they couldn't bring a chapter like it, bring a few verses like it, they couldn't. Why? Because this was divine, right? The Quran, I'm going to show you a few things in the Quran. Now look at this, right? This is the Quran now, and you have one at home, so you can read it, right? In the 25th chapter, in the 53rd ayah, in the 53rd verse, right? And he is the one who merges the two bodies of water, one fresh and one palatable, and the other salty and bitter, placing between them a barrier that they cannot cross. Now, sweet water and salt water, if you've ever been to a place where there's salt water and sweet, you'll see they come, but they don't mix. If they mix, all the water will become salty and we couldn't drink anything. This is one of the miracles of Allah that we can see, right? How would the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, know that he was in what's called Hijaz, right? This area is all fresh water. There's no ocean in Hijaz. The Red Sea is there, but that's all fresh water. Until you go to the Indian Ocean or the other side, you know the Prophet never went to the Indian Ocean. Right? So how would he have known that? Right? Let's say you say, oh, he guessed at it. All right, let's give it, let's give you that, right? Okay. <laughs> now let's look at this. This is a chapter called the Prophets, Anbiya, the 21st chapter. I, mean, I, I hate to cut you off. Go for I it. Do under, I, so, because like, at least to me, something that I, I learned, you know, in, uh, to the Prophet Isaiah. All right. In the Prophet Isaiah, he spoke how the earth is hung over nothing. Right. It, it's not, it, there's, it, and it's spherical. Exactly. So many times, and, and they never had a telescope back then, you know, how could he So I'm, I'm just exactly what you said, we're going to play off that. Look yeah, at this. Yeah. The same, this is from Allah. See, you brought that up, and Allah brought the verse to you. The Prophets, chapter 21, verse 33. And he is the one who created day and night and the sun and the moon, each traveling in an orbit. Look at that, yeah, right? Yeah. How would the Prophet ﷺ know that? He didn't have a telescope, we didn't have Hubble telescope, we didn't have NASA, we didn't have any of that. The fact that even the sun has an orbit, till very recently, scientists didn't know. And that, that's a proof right there that that's, that, a proof. that's not human written. Yeah. All right. Right there, that, that's, that, that's not human written. Yeah. All right. You you're Muslim. Yeah. That's it. All right. We're doing your. You're doing your. Your shahada. This is going to be your testimony of faith. Oh. All right. You just said it's not human written. You believe that this is from Allah. How can you not be Muslim? You already have it. That's it. <laughs> Come here, bro. You got this, man. You got this. All right. I'm gonna say it with you. I'm not gonna pick oh. it up. It's all right. Sorry, buddy. All right. So. We're gonna do it in Arabic or English first? What you wanna do? I don't know Arabic. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm gonna say, you just say it with me. Don't worry, I got you, all right? We'll do it in English first so you know what you're saying. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That the Prophet Muhammad. That the Prophet Muhammad. Is the messenger. The messenger. And slave, servant of Allah. And slave, servant of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar. You're Muslim. <laughs> all right. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah, Allah, ilaha, ilaha, illallah. Wa ashhadu, anna, Muhammadan, abduhu, wa rasuluh. Allahu Akbar, you Muslim. <laughs> greatest day of your life, bro. Greatest decision of your life and greatest day of your life. You're Muslim. Allahu Akbar. Allah, 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 Allah. Assalamu alaikum Muhammad. How are you, Habibi? How's everything? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Want to get his uh, contact info and everything? You may not realize this, but this brother Daniel, how he found our stall and how he found Islam and how he ended up accepting Islam is by the efforts of those that hate Islam. He saw a poster, this what you see on your screen, that these people had put up trying to attack me. And seeing that, and seeing me, he came and asked, he said, who are you? We see people are putting posters up, but who are you? 
So I told him I'm nobody, but I started to talk to them about his belief. And from there, we had a conversation that ended up with him accepting Islam. These people, you can see their frustration. You can see the fact that they know how successful our da'wah is. How many people are being guided towards Islam that they came and put a tent with no purpose except to attack me and Islam. Nothing. They don't call towards Christianity. They don't tell you to become Christian. All they have are pamphlets against Islam. All they have is a da'wah directed solely at me. And that's so pathetic. They don't realize I am only one weak slave of Allah. The da'wah is not dependent on me or anybody else. Subhanallah, they asked me if I'm a scholar. And I told them the truth. I'm a student of knowledge. And they think as if that's an insult. Not knowing that every true scholar, those that were scholars, never called themselves ulama. They never called themselves scholars. This is the humbleness of the Muslim scholars that they always considered themselves to be students of knowledge. Anybody who thinks they're a scholar is really a donkey, like their teacher. This is why a Siyuti, he wrote, Man qal ana alim fahuwa jahil. This hadith is not established, but this principle is correct. Which is whoever says he's a scholar, then you know he's ignorant. Every true scholar considers themselves to be a student of knowledge, but they think this is some kind of insult. And they printed this entire banner just to attack me. They asked me to write ayat and I wrote them in accordance to the Musaf Uthman radiyanhu, in how Uthman radiyan Quran was written, no dots, no harakat, no fatha, no damma, no kasra, no zir, no zabar, no pesh, to show them that every Qur'an can be read from one Qur'an, the Qur'an compiled by Uthman radiyanhu, but they're so foolish, they think I miswrote it because I didn't put the dots, which I didn't on purpose to show them that this is how the Qur'an was originally written. When we put dots, when you put harakat, this is to help aid us in being able to pronounce the words. But every style of recitation is from one Qur'an, the Qur'an of Uthman radiyanhu. But they made these posters, these personal attacks, thinking they're going to offend me, but they don't offend me because I don't care what anybody thinks. We are out there serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they tried to stop the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They tried to stop the nur of guidance, the light of tawheed from spreading and they ended up becoming the means of that brother accepting Islam and not just him. Since they came put their tent, we've had two more brothers accept Islam. Walhamdulillah. <laughs> I bear witness that there is no part for your portion. There is no part for your portion except Allah. And I also bear witness that Muhammad is the slave and messenger. I bear witness لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية